So hello and welcome everyone. Uh, can you all hear me? If someone can confirm in the chat section. Perfect. Thank you so much. So hello and welcome everyone to the first session of the privacy and data governance track. Today we have uh, Yusuf Zan to talk about Red Hat, Snake and Jenkins, a combo for reliable stack. So our speaker Yusuf is a principal software engineer in Red Hat's developer group and he has 14 years of experience in software development. And he is one of the key contributors to the Red Hat's project Fabric 8 Analytics. So I hope you all are safe, excited as I am to know about uh, Red Hat, Nick and Jenkins. All right, so I will share the pre-recorded demo and uh, the session by Yusuf. And uh, Hemant will also paste the YouTube link in the chat section in case if you face any issues, if like hop in breaks for you while watching the session so you can directly go to that link but do remember to come back here to ask your questions to Yusuf. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Yusuf Zani and I am a principal software engineer at Red Hat India. And today I'll be talking about how Red Hat, Sneak and Jenkins have come together to give the users a, comfort, a reliable stack. So these are some of the points that we are gonna to cover today. The first one is what are the major problems that the developers face on a day-to-day -day life? What's the probable solution? Why Sneak and what's up with Jenkins? Like, why we are talking about Jenkins over here. So let's take the first thing first. Uh, let's talk about the problems that the developers face on a day-to-day -day life. Let's pick up uh, which are all the prime major ones that they face. The first one is how do developers choose a right dependency? So if you are following uh, NPM or PyPy or Maven, so you would know that on a daily basis, there are thousands of new packages which are released. Now, how does a developer know which one or uh, which of these packages is useful, which one he should be using, which he should not be using. There are so many uh, available in the market. So which one to choose and which one not to choose. This is one of the dilemma that they uh, come across on a daily basis. The second one, now that you have a stack, you have a manifest file containing lots of packages or dependencies. Each of that package or dependency will have its own licensing terms. And uh, there can be chances where uh, the, uh, the developer might have included packages which are not compatible with each other, or rather I'll say the licenses of which are not compatible with each other. There might be outliers, there might be restrictions which might come up, uh, which might come because of, an, uh, because of a package which is uh, selected in the manifest file, uh, having a weird type of license. So how does a user get to know about all these things? The third and one of the primary uh, information that uh, usually uh, gets goes unnoticed is the security vulnerability. What if the package or the version that the user has selected is having vulnerability associated to it? How does one know about it? And the last one, the package that the user has selected or the developer has selected to be a part of his stack, how popular it is, how well-maintained that is, 
how does one get to know about it so we have talked about the problems that we have so what's the solution so here is the solution that we have code ready dependency analytics from red hat uh, partnered by snic so snic provides a vulnerability information over here and what it does is all the four problems that i spoke of so these are addressed in a form of a report so we in this platform we scan your manifest file we get the details of your packages and then uh, do a lot of analysis in the uh, behind the scenes and then come up with a comprehensive report which addresses more or less all the problems that i spoke of earlier so what is it that we have in the report let's have a look so CRDA as a platform uses the information that we get from the developer's manifest file and then does its own intelligent, intelligent business logic behind the scenes and then comes up with this comprehensive report that is shown to the user. So this uh, namely contains four major tabs and we'll go into details of each of the tab one by one. So the first one here is the security issues and this information, most of it is provided by snake and here we are the, uh, here red hat is partnered with snake where they provide us all the vulnerability information so it's not that snake is scanning your repository over here it's just that they are providing the vulnerability information to us and then we use our own intelligent logic behind the scenes to use that information use the information from your manifest file club it together blah, 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 and then come up with this uh, report in front of you so then comes the question why sneak so snake is the world leader when it comes to vulnerability database they have the uh, most number of vulnerability information and the most accurate ones and not only that uh, they also curate their own vulnerabilities from time to time and so what happens that the in uh, the security vulnerability information which is not even available publicly uh, is available to us via sneak which tells us that this is probable vulnerability which might be coming up and uh, that we can show it to the users. So that we categorize in the commonly known vulnerabilities and vulnerabilities unique to SNCC. So those the two sections that you see over here. So the ones that are publicly available, you get to hear, see here, plus you get to see the information that is not even available publicly. So that's where SNCC uh, comes in really handy and really helpful and comes up with a very good information about the security vulnerabilities. So now let's go into the details of what this whole card has in for you. So the first and foremost, it tells us the total number of vulnerabilities that are found. And it not only tells us the details about the direct dependencies, but also the transitive dependencies, which the user might not be even knowing that these are all the transitive packages which are available. Um, or the vulnerabilities which are there attached to these transitive dependencies. The second is the details about the vulnerabilities. Obviously, it tells about the uh, details of the publicly and the non-public, which I already spoke of. Now, here uh, is the information which is uh, really important. It tells us the details of the current version that the user is using in the stack and the recommended non-vulnerable version that he should be upgraded to so that if, if he wants to get rid of all the vulnerabilities that are associated to that package. And here you see the details about the severity of the vulnerability, the CVSS score, the exploits, all those details are shown over here. And that's not all. So there is a subsection over here where you can click and get to see all the details about the transitive dependencies. So the details is nothing uh, different from what you see over here. It's just that uh, under each direct dependency, it has a list of all the transitive dependencies which are vulnerable. And then it has the vulnerability information for them as well. So going to the second card, this is the uh, dependency details card. So here you get to know about the details of your dependency. So what all things are in store over here? Let's go one by one. So first and foremost, we tell which are all, how, what's the total number of dependencies that we have analyzed. Um, 
and how many transitives did we analyze uh, along with your direct dependencies. That's the count that we show over here. It doesn't show, uh, this is not saying that 23 are vulnerable. This is just showing the total number of transitives that are present in your package. Then over here, we show what is the current version that the user is using and what's the latest version which is available in the market. So if you want, you can upgrade it to the latest version and use the latest one. And then over here, it tells about all the GitHub statistics, which in a nutshell tells the user how popular this package is or how well maintained this package is by looking at this statistics. Going to the third card, which is the licensing con licensing details card. So here we have all the information related to the licenses. So what is the first one? We, after scanning all the packages uh, of the in the manifest file, we come up with the suggested license for your um, for your project. And in this case, it says that after scanning all the dependencies, it uh, it understands that the suggested a license that we, uh, we should be declaring for this particular project should be MIT. That's the suggestion that it gives. The second thing it tells about the licensing conflicts. So in case there are two or more packages which is having some conflicts in the licenses, then that information will be shown over here. And then there is an unknown licenses, which means that because see, uh, uh, which means that uh, these licenses are not known to us in our system. We don't know about these licenses because many times it happens that user come up with their own uh, some uh, weird names or there can be new licenses coming up every now and then so we need some time to have those things uh, up in our system and then reflect it over here so for all such licenses we mark it as unknown so that shows that we do not know about these and then we make sure that we um, over the period of time we include them, uh, them as well and then those uh, do not continue to be unknown anymore and the last one is the restrictive licenses so licenses anyway have different different categories so if uh, most of the packages are uh, really open um, and available uh, free, free to use and then there is some packages which is very very restrictive so such uh, such packages are called outliers or restrictive so those are again mentioned over here that there are some licenses which are that's just like say you have most of them with uh, Apache 2.0 or MIT, and then there you have one or two packages which is having Afero GPL, something like that. So then the one with Afero GPL obviously is restrictive and it's going to change the entire license for your project. So that is mentioned over here that you have a restricted license. If you want, you can use it. If you want, if you don't want, you can change it. Now the last information is about the add-on tabs. So here we have our own AI uh, models which run and then comes up with a suggestion of the packages that can be added to your uh, dependencies as companions. So in this case, you are seeing that there, uh, it is giving a suggestion of four dependencies which should be added. So let's see what all details it shows. So it tells about the confidence score of each of the dependency uh, this is again uh, coming from the AI model. So how confident it is that this uh, dependency should be included in your manifest file. So we mentioned it by the confidence score. So if the confidence score is very high, it means that many, many people are using it and our engine highly recommends that this should be there as part of your system or your part of a project. And then uh, along with the uh, confidence score and the package name. It also gives you the latest information which is available in the market, the GitHub statistics about the package so that you can you, know, you can check how popular this is, which I already spoke of. You can check all these details. It tells you how popular it is among the different developers. And then obviously this is just a suggestion that we are giving you. So we expect a suggestion, uh, feedback from you as well. Did you like our suggestion? Did you uh, did not like our suggestion? You can always give us a up vote or a down vote. So this is all that we have in the uh, comprehensive stack report. Wow, that was really detailed and comprehensive. Awesome, isn't it? So now that we know what are all the problems and now that we know that we have a solution, 
the next question that comes to our mind is how do we use it? So there are a lot of ways how the platform can be used, but as part of this uh, demo or this presentation, we will be discussing about how it can be used in Jenkins as a Jenkins plugin. So before I go to the demo, there are a few prerequisites that I would uh, assume that people already know, or if you want to uh, work along with this, and if you're watching this video on YouTube, probably you can pause here, follow these uh, steps and then continue. So the assumption is like, who was the Jenkins admin? He should have the CRDA CLI installed in his system. The admin should have generated the UUID by using the CRDA auth command. The Jenkins should be installed in your system. Like that's a basic thing. And then our plugin, which is called the Red Hat Code Ready Dependency Analysis plugin, should be installed in that Jenkins instance. So these are some of the prerequisites. And the reason why I'm uh, skipping these steps is because uh, there's a constraint uh, on the duration or the length of this video or the uh, or the presentation. So I cannot go on doing all these things, which takes a little bit of time in order to save that time. I'm just putting these as a steps. So just go through these steps and then you are, you are good to follow along from the next steps that I show. And don't worry about all of this. Uh, if you are not aware of where to find the CRDA CLI, if you are not aware how to install it and all, I'll have all those links uh, in the description. And at the end of the slide, I'll have all of uh, everything in place. So please do not worry about it. Okay. So assuming that you are done with the initial steps, now let's it's time to start the actual demo. So once you're logged into the Jenkins portal, the first thing is to create some credentials. And for that, you have to go to manage Jenkins, go to manage credentials. And here you need to click to create a add credentials. Now in the dropdown that you have, uh, that you find over here in the kind, you have to select the CRDA key. So automatically it will give all the details that it requires to create the key. So keep the scope as global. And uh, in the CRDA, key field, you click on this uh, help key in order to understand what is it that is required. So here we need the CRDA token, which you would have created as part of the initial step via the CRDA CLI. So let's just give some dummy value over here. Uh, just assuming that you have provided the CRDA key over here. Now comes the part of the ID and the description. So ID, you, uh, there are two options, like you, you can either give your own ID or allow Jenkins to generate its own ID. So for the uh, purpose of the demo, I'll put some uh, ID over here. And the same, I'll keep it in the description. And you click OK. And that's that's the credential that is created for you. So that's the first step. So once the credential setup is done, the next part is to start using this plugin. As part of this demo, I'll show it via a build pipeline project, Jenkins pipeline project, and a Jenkins freestyle project. So let's take the freestyle project first. So once you click on this configure button, if you scroll down under the build section, you will pro, uh, see a uh, add a build step option. And in that you need to select invoke CRDA analysis. So as soon as you click on that, it will give you all the fields that are necessary for this plugin to run. The uh, important parts is the file path and the CRDA key. So the file path, obviously uh, for the demo <coughs> purpose, I am uh, keeping this file in a temporary location. Um, but in your case, if you are running it in a full-fledged manner, obviously you'll have different different steps. Like you'll first um, clone the repo, then build the repo, run some CI checks and all, and then probably have the steps. So obviously you'll have the you'll have a different location. But yeah, let's keep it as it is, just just for simplicity. So this is the location. Let's copy and paste here. And if you remember, just some time back we created this uh, uh, um, secret. So this is the one which I already had earlier, and this is the one that we created some time back. So let's select that. So now it says that uh, all the uh, mandatory fields are provided. Now, uh, the third part is the CRDA CLI version. So here, if you do not want to use the latest version, 
then you can actually specify a particular version that of that you want to use so the format is v uh, dot 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 so you can give 0 dot 2 dot 2 over here if you wish to use this version if you do not uh, provide anything over here it will take the default version and the last one is the contribution towards the usage statistics so from here we take some consent from the user to collect some uh, telemetry data uh, we do not uh, store any username, email, and all those stuff. It's just for us to understand like where this call is coming from, how many packages did we scan, how many vulnerabilities did we report, such type of information. So if you wish to provide, or if you wish to allow us to check that data and uh, keep a track of it, then you need to uh, check this button. If you don't want, then don't check this button. So that's all that is required as part of this plugin step. And if, if once you click save, after that, you can click on build. Let's go to the console. Well, you, you see that uh, it's saying that it has, uh, it has found that 023 was the version which was already installed. So that is why it is ready to be used. If this version was not present, or if you would have wished for a different version to be used, then that installation would have happened first for that CLI, and then this analysis would have begun. So once the analysis is done, you get this information, all this information in the text form in the logs, and you get all these details about the vulnerabilities, the packages that we scanned, and all those stuff. And along with that, we get a link uh, via which you, the user can see the comprehensive report that I was talking about earlier. So in the logs, you just see the vulnerability information because we feel that that is the most important one that we uh, that the user is uh, concerned about. And that's why we provide that first. Now, along with that, if you see here, you see a icon, Red Hat icon, which says CRD stack report. And if the user clicks on that, the same information, the same vulnerability information, you can see it in a much more graph, uh, better uh, view which is in the graphical format. And then here you can see the exact details of how many direct dependencies were scanned, how many transitors were scanned, how many were found as vulnerable, how many vulnerabilities did we find, the, uh, the ones which were publicly available, the ones which were unique to SNCC, and along with that, which is, is the severity, the low, medium, high, and critical. Once you're done with this, you also have an option to see the report from here as well. The same one, the, the same link that I uh, that was provided in the logs, you, uh, the same report can be accessed from here as well. You just click, need to click on it. And then you see the entire report over here. So which contains not only the security issues, but also the dependency details, the licensing details, and the add-ons feature. So here under the vulnerabilities, you see the ones which are commonly available, the ones which is unique to SNCC. And yeah, uh, one thing which I forgot to mention earlier was um, if uh, once you start using this uh, platform for the first time, obviously you will not be a registered SNCC user, you'll be only a CRDA user. So in such cases, there are some limitations that you will see in the vulnerabilities information that you won't see the exploits, you won't see the vulnerabilities which are unique to SNCC, but rest of the things you'll see the, as it is. If you want to see all the information, then you just need to register yourself with SNCC, which, which, which is totally free of cost. There's nothing that you need to, um, th th there's not, no money involved over here. You don't need to pay anything. And once you register yourself with SNCC, you just need to provide the SNCC token over here. It's a very simple step. Uh, you just need to click go to the UTM, uh, follow the steps from there. So if you just click here, it will take you to the page, registration page, uh, do follow the steps, get the key, and then uh, put it back over here and then click submit and it will show you as registered. And as soon as you are registered, you will start seeing all the features like the unique information and the exploits and the details and everything will come up. So, this is what you see uh, in the CRDA Jenkins plugin and the report uh, when you are trying to view it from the uh, freestyle project. Similar report will come up for the Jenkins pipeline also. But yeah, let's uh, see how can that be done.
So let's now check the pipeline. In case of pipelines, this is a little bit of difference on how do we do the configuration. So if you click on configure here, you'll see that we usually use the pipeline scripts to uh, do the build. So in this, uh, this is the line which we are interested in. This is the one which is going to actually call the CRD analysis. And these are the four parameters, file, CRD key ID, CLI version, and consent telemetry, along with the values that we need to pass. Now, uh, this can be a little tedious because uh, people might not remember the exact uh, exact parameters. They might have some uh, typographical uh, errors that they can do while writing this. So a better way to add this command here is by using the pipeline syntax. So click on this pipeline syntax generator and uh, go to CRD analysis. And here you'll see that the options are there, that what are all the fields that is mandatory. And in this, you fill out the details. And in this, select the CRDA key, provide the CLI version, and the consent telemetry. And then click on the generate pipeline script. So as soon as you click on this, the command that needs to be passed will be generated. And this can be copied and pasted here so that uh, the proper value is sent and there is no uh, scope of any errors, manual errors. And then just click on save and click on build. So let's go to the console. And here also we see that the requirement required version is 023 and it is doing the analysis. And this time uh, I have selected pom.xml to show you the Maven part of it. In the previous example, we saw the package JSON. And in this, I wanted to show you the Java part. So once the analysis in this is completed, it will show you the same similar type of results, which is the vulnerability information in the logs along with the URL which can be clicked to see the report. And along with that, uh, there will be a UI representation of the same, where you can go in, check in the details, see the vulnerability, and then on a click, you can see the report as well. So if you remember, I had mentioned that uh, Jenkins is not the only place where you can find us. There are a lot of other places. So there are different stages uh, in development life cycle. So let's start with the first thing. Like your, uh, the developer has just started writing the code. He has just opened an IDE and he's you know started with the manifest file or he's just adding some packages to start his project, maybe starting with the hello world itself. So he has to have some packages, right? So as soon as the first package or the first um, dependency is added in the manifest file, our plugin kicks in and then at that instant, it tells the developer if he has any vulnerability associated with that package. And if the user wants, then he always have an option to check out the comprehensive report at any point of time during his entire development cycle. And he will get to see the detailed report as I showed earlier. So those plugins are available in VS Code and IntelliJ. Now let's get to the next stage. Uh, the coding is done, you have committed the code. So as soon as you commit the code, obviously you will have some sort of a build pipeline um, set up. So there again, we have different options. You can either use the Jenkins plugin in the way that I have already explained, or you can use the GitHub Action or Tekton, whichever one uh, you like. You can uh, pick anyone and then according to your requirements, you can use either of them. Now coming to the last part where the even the commit is done now the image is created and now you're ready to uh, ship the image or you're ready to promote the image so if you are uh, uploading the image to quay again we have an option over there as soon as you upload the image to quay our uh, plugin will kick in and it will give you the details about the vulnerability and all and the same goes with the clear image scanner if you want to use you can use there as well now, suppose if you are sort of a command line hero 
who doesn't want to use any of these plugins, who doesn't want these UI interfaces and all, and you know, you are comfortable writing commands and all. For so all for such people, we also have our command line interface where after you type some commands, you'll get the your entire stack scanned, and then you will get a link for the uh, detailed report, which you can click on and see the report. Yeah, obviously the report will remain as a UI component. You cannot have a command line interface for that, but at least the execution part and all, you can do it via the CLI. And then you do not have to install any plugins and all if you want, if you don't want to do that. And as I promised earlier, uh, these are all the relevant links uh, where you can find us where this about the details on the Jenkins plugins, CRDA, CLI, VS Code plugin, IntelliJ plugin. And if you want to play around, you, I have also pasted this sample report link and you can click on it just to see how the report is, get a first hand feel. Anybody uh, whoever is watching this video can just use this link and then uh, play around with the report and have a look at it. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, again, I'll repeat that all these links are available in the description. Just go and check it out, play around, um, check out all the features, give some feedback, whether appreciative or if you do not like something, tell us about that. And also let us know what are all the other features that you will be interested in, what are all the new things that you'll be interested in. Uh, currently, we are supporting Golang, Maven, uh, NPM, and Python. So if you want any other programming languages to be included in this platform, which are all the pro uh, languages that you would like, uh, please uh, comment, please let us know about all those things, and then we'll make sure that we pick up the ones which uh, the developers want the most. And with that, I'll come to the end of the presentation. You guys are great. Thank you.